Hello and welcome to Toby's Blogs on the 50th anniversary Doctor's Special looking at uh, the William Hartnell era and then crossing over to the Patrick Chatton era looking at season 4 of Doctor Who. Yes, uh, just to clarify, the war machines we missed out from season 3 because we ran out of time basically. So, the war machines. war machines I find to be a very good story. The introduction of the characters of Ben and Polly. Uh, Michael Cray is wonderful as the Cockney Sailor and uh, Polly, wonderful as the sort of the lady in the uh, working in the bar, isn't it? She works in the bar, doesn't she? Yes. So, um, the war machines and the Jackie Lane, time. disappointing ending story for her. Yeah, she, she just, just disappears. Sort of disappears halfway yeah. through the story, which is a poor ending for her character. Um, I think it's a good story for the Doctor. He's pitted against uh, a computer entity for the first time, and um, it's fantastic to see you know this computer that can actually think for itself, control these machines to take over the world, wasn't it? Mm. You know. Um, Doctor Who is really um, And those people who are so mad, mm. then they must be destroyed! Destroyed! Kill them, they must be destroyed! That's right, so the, 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 these humans thinking, what, what, a computer's controlling us? This is not possible. No! And uh, obviously it all happens. And, um, and the people building the war machines are also crazy. That's right. Goes but um, destroy, terrific destroy. story. Uh, wonderful to see the, the new characters. And you see a lot of nice things about London, the, the, the BT post, uh, poor BT Tower, killed. modern day BT Tower, post office tower. And uh, yeah, the poor old man that gets killed at the beginning. Mm, the warehouse. But uh, fantastic story, very enjoyable, and a lot of and um, Ben and Polly just run into the TARDIS. A to gorgeous storyline. That's and right, and they go right. inside, which is not good. You know, the Doctor's not happy with them, and uh, the smugglers. Ben is thinking, well, "What is this? Oh, yeah, we're not in Cornwall, or Devon, or where it is." So you know, and it's the just quite interesting. The Doctor story. proves him wrong, and uh, yes, I mean the smugglers. It's stabbings. It's gunshots. You know, it's, it's, violence, it's pirates. Violence. Oh my goodness. You know, I think it's fantastic. You know, it's a great story and it's sad we don't have it anymore. Well, we got all the good bits. All the killing yeah, bits. we got a few bit killings, but it's just not enough. I mean, just you know, frozen life. Pike. Back. Oh, and at the, the end, it's the, the fight between Pike and um, what's the other one called? Trying to find the gold. Yeah, the other guy Pike with the and hook. The, and the, what's the, it's the mayor, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, you know, that Pike gets. Killed in the end by the, the guy with the yeah. hook, you know, um, a porker maker. Who's mm -hmm. in that scene? Wipe the blood on a tissue. But uh, a brilliant story yeah, and um, fantastic. You Maybe know, a good historical story. That's right. Possibly the last really good. good historical story we've seen in the sixties, unfortunately. Um, then we move on to the finale of William Hartnell's season, where we are introduced to the fantastic Cybermen. And yes, they may not have appeared as as good as they did in stories after, but they were very well realised, they were quite human at this stage in their evolution, and um, you kind of felt sorry for them. Their planet was, you know, going to be destroyed. And they wanted, obviously, the Earth to be the, the, the planet that gets destroyed. Um, the guy, of course, in charge of the base, um, I suppose at times I found him a little bit annoying, the fact, you know, he was quite sort of controlling but that's what he's there for he's a commander isn't he it's his son in the air um the doctor obviously it's a doctor light story you know he's well worn out and the doctor's sort of in bed for most of the period and it's down to the companions to try and you know leave the storyline and i think that's well realized it's sad at the beginning when we see characters such as tito and the other man get struck down by the side men in the ice as they go towards um I think it's the TARDIS, isn't it? Yeah. You know, towards the TARDIS. Um, but fantastic. Well, they come from around the back of the TARDIS. Yeah. Fantastic story, The Tenth Planet, and yeah. uh, particularly so at the fantastic. end. I love when they line up all the... Uh, the radiation chambers, that was interesting. They I like line that. up all the guns and mm. they fire them. Bee, bee, bee. And I think the other... Kill yeah, them, the, the, the uh, scenes in episode four, with the mm. uh, when they're in the... When the Doctor's in the chamber and the Cybermen and stuff. Mm. And, and they're killing the Cybermen with gas. That's and right. And the Cybermen all disintegrate wow. as well. So with radiation. Just, yes. <laughs> Very fantastic clever. Fantastic story. And of course, right at the end, you know, the Doctor, his, body, his body's wearing a bit thin, as he says. He regenerates. And there's a new face. And it ends there. And it's very exciting. 
we see the lead actor change. And you're thinking probably back then for God knows how many months, or maybe it could have been a week, it might have been the week after, you know, who's the next person? Who is this man? What's happened? Is he dead? No, why has the face changed? So no one really knew at the time, but people kind of accepted it because they had a brilliant new actor coming up to be the next Doctor, who was completely different. And that's where we start with Power of the Daleks in Season 4. Power of the Daleks is a tremendous story, um, introducing Patrick Troughton as the Doctor. And his Doctor is a lot more, I suppose, fun. fun. A clown. Yeah, fun. Uh, Joker. Dandy clown. Yeah. And, you know, very energetic, sort of running around all over the place and screaming and shouting, you know. A lively Doctor, you know, compared to Bill Hartnell's stubborn sternness. This man was sort of more open and um, funny. Um, Power of the Daleks are very good. Um, I mean, the, the Daleks are in the shadows, basically, at the very beginning. A man called Lesterson um, has hidden them in the spaceship that was just, um, which had been discovered. And... Um, the Doctor did have his suspicions at the very beginning. Obviously, he's only just been regenerated, so he was acting a little bit sort of weird at the time. But he was very clever at sort of solving the mystery of the Daleks and knowing that <laughs> the Daleks don't mean well. They're here for one reason, to kill you all. Mm. And they just didn't believe it in the colony. They thought, oh, fantastic, these people can do all the work. Think of all the achievements. But sometimes it does teach you a lesson that some things are, are better salad. are not better for a certain reason, that's because you can't trust the Daleks. Um, well, my favourite scenes in the episodes, the, con the conveyor belt. And that's right, the sort Daleks. of the Dalek factory, isn't yes. it? That's very interesting. That's my favourite We scenes. will get our power and, I am your servant. You know, it's fantastic. And I love that scene in the uh, in the office, yeah, when there's the Dalek and one of the people attaches the gun. Well, another thing that's interesting is, who is the actual... Um, betrayer in that colony you know because obviously the doctors know at the beginning and uh, and obviously we find out that it's Bregan who's been uh, you know helping in Lesterson uh, but extremely good story and sadly lost from our archives so we move on to the Power of the Daleks with a very different story in the Highlanders. Highlanders the Highlanders I think is a good story I should have watched it as a recon and Kirsty, a very well realised character. The beginning of, of course, Jamie's character, as uh, played by Fraser Hines. Not the best historical in the world, but I think it has its good moments. Um, not one that even I, though I've watched the recon, I don't seem to recall a great deal. But I, I know that I didn't think it was boring. I thought it was watchable, and um, yes, it's a shame that's missing too from our archives. But um, a good second story for the Doctor. Patrick Troughton has been criticised in the story for playing a German doctor. Have you seen your eyes lately? I think you need to go and see the doctor. You know, and um, I think it was part of his skills. He was very good at mimicking other voices, uh, with other accents. Why not? You know, it's, it was all part of his doctor, a fun doctor. He was a bit mad at the beginning, which was fine. Perfect. And, uh, yeah, good story in the Highlanders. Then we move on to The Underwater Menace, Another story. which I think is a very good story. Uh, now seeing episode two, um, it's changed my belief. I mean, people used to see episode three and think, what the hell is this Zaroff all about? And say, oh, his accent was terrible and this, that and the other. You know, They say, we have seen episode two. That's right, we have seen yet, it. But we have seen it. We won't say how. <laughs> but um, Megalomaniac. Um... Professor Zaroff was, but his character was yeah. just perfect for the role. And you just find out so much more in episode two. Episode That's two right. Make much sense. You find out the plans two, of Professor Zaroff. You find Zaroff. out his plan, you find out how crazy and of it course, is. Um, you find out a lot more. You see Ramon speaking with the Doctor, and they try to pre present um, their views to um, the, uh, the man in charge of the fish people. And unfortunately, he turns them over to Zaroff. Which is not good because he's very sort of religious believing and he's believed everything that Zaroff has said to him. And he knows that Ramon doesn't like Zaroff. And uh, that's of course when things go pear shaped for the Doctor. And uh, obviously Zaroff's plan is to sink Atlantis. Sorry, to make Atlantis rise. Rise, Atlantis. rise it from the sea. By but, doing um, that you would destroy the planet. That's right. Which uh, 
obviously was a mad idea. <laughs> oh, indeed, it's fantastic catch. But friends. the interesting thing, at the end of episode three, we all think um, the man who's in charge of the fish people is dead, but he's not, as we see in the next episode. Um, but a good story, definitely, a very good story. Phrase. Nothing in the world can stop me now! Yes, you should get the loose cannon recon, it's because lovely. on that video you get to see uh, him do it once more. And he's really old. And so, unfortunately, Joseph First is now no longer with us. But um, he was certainly with us about five or six years ago when he did the DVD. Fantastic actor. Next we move on to the Moon Base. Uh, the Moon Base is a very good story featuring the Sidemen. More in line with the type two and the Sidemen type Sidemen. Yeah. Um, I think with this particular story, again, we have a very good cast on the uh, weather station on the Moon. Which, um, I mean, obviously, the Gravitron controlling the world's weather. A more multicultural cast. That's right, and a very interesting virus taking over people's bodies, sort of on yeah. the, the sort of the nerves of, of the body, and uh, good detective work in this story. Uh, episode three is yes, my friend best. here says the best. The best episode because the Cybermen actually invade the base. They're actually in the control room. That the actors are actually facing the Cybermen, mm. and. Uh, uh, Polly destroys the Cybermen with a nail varnish. But it's very interesting. The only problem with the moon base is right at the end, and I think it's similar to the Wheel in Space. Is the the ship uh, the ships and the Cybermen, you know, the the use of the gravitron, and then they've all suddenly just whooshed into space. You know, why didn't that happen earlier in the story? Yeah. You know, it's a bit of a rushed ending. But that's just being very critical. I think it's still a very good story, the moon base. But not the best Sidemen story of this era. That's to come. Looking... Hurry up, give me up some. The Macro Terra? Macro Terra. I don't know. I find it very difficult to get into the Macro Terra when I start watching it. I think uh, the character of Olaf is... You know, I don't, I don't really like his character. I like the, uh, the one on the screen that you see all the time. The sort of uh, controller, I think they call him. Uh, and the macro, I think they're quite macro terrifying, coming out the shadows. Um, but certain yeah. things, I think, are a bit boring. The little treatments and various other things, I like that. You know, it's like it's like almost like a holiday camp, isn't it? The dancing girls, Annika Wills, That's Molly right. being <laughs> grabbed by macro. And That's right. And saving her. Very good story, though, and it's a shame it's missed from the archives because I think this one uh, could be quite an interesting one to watch. Um, Moving on to the next one, The Faceless Ones. The Faceless Ones, I think, is an extremely exist. good story. It is, but the ones, the episodes we have at the moment are kind of bringing it down because people are looking at those episodes mm. and thinking, I wouldn't really say story. episode two would be the best one found. I think episodes four, five, and six yeah, after, is where after, it becomes after, interesting. Episode three we got. Yeah, yeah, episode after three that, is the plane, after that isn't episode, it? Episode everything's changing on the plane. Everyone fantastic. disappears, and, and then it, that it, is brilliant. Then it becomes a fantastic after story. That. Just the yeah. bits that survive are the only rubbish bits. The, the next bits are the brilliant, fantastic bits, and the story really gets going and it gets really exciting. Yes, yeah, onto the spaceship, and uh, you know these faces ones have taken all the people's identities in the airport. I just see so you many know, it's more just incredible. Of the faces ones. And That's everything. right, and the doctor and nurse Pinto's, you know, a real piece of work. You know, there's the face. I watch one. again and again and again because they're so fantastic. Definitely, I think very well realised story. The only big downfall is Ben and Polly's exit, uh, which is a shame mm -hmm. because we only halfway through the story they both gone and then even Jamie's gone as well at some point, and then you don't get Ben and Polly come back until the end. It's like, oh, bye, Doctor. We it's the day that they left or something, and then or the day after they left, and um, they just go back to where they're, they're from. The ending is very good because we go straight into Eve of the Daleks, and the TARDIS has been stolen. The Eve of the Daleks, a very good story. I don't think, to me, it's the best Dalek story. Again, I think Dalek Master Plan is stronger than this one. But the Emperor Dalek is the big highlight of Eve of the Daleks. Max Dibble's character just goes comple completely mad towards the end. The sad demise of Mr. Waterfield, who gets killed by a Dalek, saving the Doctor, yes. bravely. The humanised Daleks. That's right. Alpha, Beta and Omega, isn't it? Fantastic, yeah. Playing around with the Doctor, that was fantastic and fun. Um... And also um, the Victorian era, that was nice yeah. to see that. It was a, an interesting idea, the mirrors in the laboratory, really, really good. Even the Daleks, I'd say, one of the best highlights yes. of the season. In summary, what was the best story of this season? Well, this is tricky, because I think there are a few here yes. which are quite good. Um, for me, I would probably say oh dear, 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 dear. Power of, or Evil of the Daleks. Thank you and goodbye.